So the next person who's going to join us is, is another denim buddy and another denim friend. Um, right now, she's probably just finishing um, a yoga class right now, but she's hardcore. Her name is Laura, Laura Dixon, and she's going to be doing amazing presentation for us. And something that she came up with the idea, idea of like, should I do one about tech packing? And I went, do you know what? That's, that's amazing. Because obviously I've asked a lot of our denim friends to join us. These, these are guys with like 15, 20 years plus experience. So Laura's had her experience of looking at some fair amount of tech packs, good and bad. So it would be great to see her opinion and uh, I'll leave it for her to take it away. So I'll speak to you, Laura, in about 10, like 15 minutes. Lots of luck. Lots of luck. Thanks, Mozin. All right. Hi, everybody. Thanks for uh, staying with us for so long over these last couple of days. I'm going to talk to you about tech packs, which is maybe not the most glamorous side of the fashion industry. It, it's not particularly creative, I should say. Um, but in fact, I think it's one of the most important things in the, the design process. So over the last couple of days, we've talked quite a lot about sustainability in the industry. And we've talked about sustainability from a fabric side. We've talked about sustainability from a laundry side and a manufacturing side. But what we haven't really talked about yet is the waste side. And a lot of waste happens actually in the design process. Now, this fact that I have up on the screen right now, an estimated 92 million tons of waste is created from the global fashion industry. And that is of course, slated to rise to 148 million tons by 2030. 80% of an environmental impact is, is determined during the design phase. And as a designer or a product developer, you're very much responsible for creating a lot of that waste. A lot of waste happens in the design and development process. You might not really realize that. You might think that you make a sketch, you receive a garment, you make a sample and you're done. But the reality is that you end up with a lot of waste in that process. I'm gonna tell you a little story. I started my career around 20 years ago with Pepe Jeans. At that point, we were still faxing our tech packs to, the, to our suppliers. And yeah, so one season I faxed a load of tech, pa tech packs to our suppliers. I arrived in India a couple of months later to do a proto review. And what did I find? I found 20 identical navy blue t-shirts. They should have been 20 different navy blue t-shirts, but they were all identical. Well, what I realized was that the tech pack was not terribly clear and somehow we should do a better job of communicating exactly what we want. So yeah, those 20 garments, we wasted the time of the people that made them. We wasted the time of me and my team we wasted the time reviewing them, having to change them, having to explain what we really wanted. And what happened at the end of that trip, those 20 t-shirts, they all got sent to me in London. They sat under my desk for quite some months until I had a big lot of waste below my desk. And then, yeah, I threw it all in the bin basically. So I started thinking, how do we, how do we design out all this waste that we have in our design and development process? So yeah, tech packs, they're not very glamorous. <laughs> They're pretty procedural. And to be honest, most of us really hate doing them because they take quite a lot of time. But in my opinion, they are the key to eliminating waste in the design chain. So I'm going to talk you through today a tech pack, what it is, why you need it, and how it can help you become more sustainable and how it can help you to eliminate waste. So what is a tech pack? It's a set of documents. Now they might be created by a designer, a product developer, a technical designer. It depends how big the team is. And they are basically a Bible to explain the design to a manufacturer so that the manufacturer can turn your sketch into a finished product. It's one master document that tracks the whole product development cycle, including comments, revisions, and changes that you make throughout the process. Why do you need a tech pack? two very simple reasons. Number one is that most contractors or agents or factories, they don't accept an order without a clear and detailed tech pack. And number two, the ultimate goal of a tech pack is to minimize the number of samples that are made and to bring the product to market with the least number of samples and steps possible, therefore eliminating as much waste as possible. So. 
what are the essentials that a tech pack should, should contain? Very simply, you need to make sure that every single page clearly shows either your name as the designer or the company name that you're designing for. It needs to show a style number, some kind of reference, the season, the vendor or the factory name, and the date of creation. Why does every single page need to have that? Simply because somebody somewhere is gonna print it out. Somebody somewhere is gonna lose a page, put a page in with another side, with another style. Things can easily get mixed up. So you need to have very clear information on the top of every single page, exactly what that tech pack is referring to. Then you have several pages. I'm gonna to talk today mostly about the development stage but there is more further down the line at the production stage. So just quickly running through, at the development stage, you need flat drawings, you need technical sketches, a bill of material, information about some branding, information about the washing, a sample size measurement sheet, and a comments sheet. Later on at production stage, you will add graded measurement charts for all the sizes. You will also add things like home washing instructions, labeling, packing, delivery instructions, that kind of thing. But today I'm gonna to walk you through the development part as that's the kind of area that we're focusing on at the moment. So you start your first page with flat drawings. Very simply, a black and white picture of, yeah, of exactly what you want. Outline drawings, so they're very, very clear. A front, a back. Depending on the style, you may also need a side drawing. You may, might need an interior drawing. It really depends. If you're using multiple thread colors on a garment, it's also a good place here to specify what those thread colors are and where they go. So this, tech, this flat drawing front and back sketch should be very, very clear of exactly what you want in the garment. One thing that you should really pay attention to is that the front and back are matching. Yesterday, uh, Jason Denham talks about how he designs a pair of jeans in 3D. A lot of designers don't necessarily design in 3D. They still draw things by hand and they might draw the front of the jeans or the front of the garment, and then later on think about the back of the garment. So you really need to make sure that the front and the back match up. Do you have the same color thread at the top of the front waistband, the top of the back waistband? Do you have single needle on both sides or twin needle on both sides? You really need to make sure that they both add up basically. Then you move on to technical sketches. These are kind of close up details of your garment, of the several parts of your garment. This is where you highlight things like stitching details, construction techniques, a little bit about your trim placements maybe. And yeah, depending on how complicated your garment is, that's going to depend how many technical drawings you need, how close up you need them, if we're talking specifically about denim, then it's pretty important to have back pocket technical drawings because as we all know, a big proportion of the jean and how it looks and how it fits well is all about the shape, the size and the positioning of the back pockets. So including as many technical sketches as you can is really, really important. And again, it's really important that they match completely with the front and the back sketch. So if you make changes, you need to make sure that you make changes across every single sketch that you make. Then you have a bill of material. Now you can see here on my slide that there's a few different ways of doing bill of materials. It could be a kind of Excel type chart or it could be simply a list maybe with images. But what is important on a bill of material? It's basically the list of ingredients. It's the list of all the ingredients that go into the garment that you're requiring. So it's the base fabric, it's the trim fabric, it's the pocketing, it's the buttons, it's the labels, it's the thread colors, it's any interlinings. It's important on here that you take note of who the supplier is of each item. So you can see, for example, the button, it comes from this supplier, it is this code, the supplier code, it's color whatever, and this is how many you need of them. So it's important you give all this information because normally in a factory, it is a purchasing department that will purchase the trims. It's not necessarily the merchandiser that you work with. So this list is gonna be given to some little guy in an office somewhere, and he's simply gonna go through and see button reference X from supplier Y in color black. We need 27 of those. And that's how they go ahead and order. It's also really important that you have very clear and detailed bill of material because this is a great way for a factory to make a costing on your garment. 
by looking at the sketch, they can quickly make a costing of how much it's going to use, uh, how much it's going to cost for the construction side of it. And the bill of material is going to help them work out the cost of all the materials that are involved in it. Getting a detailed costing at an early stage solves a lot of headaches later on. It also solves a lot of waste later on because you know up front if you can afford this or not. So you're not going to be spending time wasting, wasting time and wasting money on a garment that you ultimately can't afford. So this is a really good way to get a clear bill of material to get a good idea of how much your garment is going to cost. Branding info. So I stole this little page from uh, one of Mosin's tech packs. Sometimes you have branding that isn't a label bought from external supplier. It maybe isn't a patch or a button, but you need the factory themselves to do a print or an embroidery. So you need to make sure that you give a very clear instruction of what you want and where you want it. So in this case, it's an inside print on a pocket bag. This, this uh, detail sketch clearly shows where it goes on the pocket bag, which pocket bag it goes on. And a page like this was, uh, will always be accompanied by a technical page for the branding itself. So you'll be able to see what color you want the print, what size you want the print, what type of print you want. Maybe it's a plastisol print, maybe it's a water-based print, maybe it's an embroidery. So it's really important that you give branding information. Again, this also helps with the costing of the garment in the ultimate. Washing information. So when we're working on denim specifically, we're quite often running our wash developments alongside our garment developments, our style developments. And at some stage, the two need to come together. So it's quite important in your tech pack that you have a page where you can clearly put information about the washing. Maybe you have the wash completely approved by the time you add this in and you can simply add in the picture of the approved, the reference of the approved, the laundry reference, Maybe you also need to add some comments in here if it's something still ongoing, or maybe you have something on the style which will need to be altered specifically with the wash. So for example, you might have approved the wash on a full length pant and now you want to apply it onto a short. So you need to add some comments onto this page as well to see how it's gonna go, what you need to do to tweak it maybe to make it fit for the final garment. Measurements. Now, measurements are also really, really important. Um, at the development page, development stage, you're just gonna add measurements for your sample size. Normally you will maybe also send a pattern to your producer, or maybe your producer is gonna have to make the pattern themselves. So it's really important that this page contains all the measurements that you require. If you're sending a pattern, it's important that they match the pattern. And it's very important that you add things like pocket sizes, pocket shapes, any details that are very specific to the style that you're developing. Quite often you will always also add a comment uh, regarding your tolerance. So you can see on this slide it's called deviance. Maybe you have a centimeter tolerance here and there. Maybe some things don't have any tolerance. Maybe some things have bigger tolerance than others. So it's quite important for each measurement that you specify what your tolerance is. It's also very important that you specify what units you're measuring in. Some companies use inches still, some companies use centimeters, some companies use inches for bottoms and centimeters in tops. So it's quite important that you include what measurement units you're using. And it's also quite important that you really specify exactly how you're measuring. You can see on this slide, for example, that a half waist is measured, a half thigh, a half leg. Some companies, they measure all the way around and that's the measurement they pop on their measurement sheet. So it's really important that it's very, very clear on this page exactly what you're measuring. If you're working with a bigger company, you may have sent separately a measuring, measurement guide. Um, yeah, depending on your company that you're working with or maybe if it's just yourself. If you have a measurement guide, then you don't really need to add much more here except for your measurement sheet. If you don't have a measurement guide, you want, maybe want to add some technical drawings on here as well as to how to measure things. Um, so some points, if you're measuring A to B, this is where you're measuring from, etc. Okay. Comment sheets are also pretty important because you simply want to be able to track and comment on exactly what you do. So you've, you've sent off your tech pack at the point where you've sent it off, this page is probably gonna be completely empty. You get back your prototype, you start 
reviewing your prototype and this is where you start adding the comments in. You start explaining to your factory what you want, what you like, what you don't like, what needs to be changed. And yeah, it's quite important that this page is really, really clear. So you both you can track exactly what you're changing, your factory can track exactly what you're changing, and also people later down the line can also track what has happened in the development process. So here I have a little video. Let me see if it's going to play. But basically this video I collected from uh, quite a lot of denim colleagues, all different types of tech packs. These tech packs, they're all different, but they're all pretty much the same. They all include all those pages that I've just talked about. Some are a bit more detailed than others. Some are a bit less detailed than others. It depends really on the style and exactly what you're aiming for in your final garment. So key takeaways, how to make the perfect tech pack. Why do you need the perfect tech pack? And what is it going to achieve? So the tech pack, you need to be thorough. You, make, you need to make sure that all the pages show any matching information. Like I said before, the front and the back sketch need to match up. The detailed sketches need to make, match up. Everything needs to be matching with each other. That's going to avoid a lot of questions, a lot of mistakes later on. You need to get to know your vendor and your factory very well to understand how to communicate with them. Everybody has different terminology for different things, especially in a denim laundry. We call them moustache, we call them whiskers. There's different words and different vendors, different factories and different countries. They all have different terms. So it's super important that you really understand how to communicate with the vendor that you're sending the tech pack for. You also need to make sure that any terminology that you're using on your tech pack makes sense to all the members of the supply chain. And whether you're using Illustrator to make a tech, tech pack Excel, a specialist PLM software, you need to make sure every tech pack is the Bible for each garment. And why does it need to be the garment, the Bible for each garment? There's a few reasons. You want to make sure that you get back a sample that you're expecting. You don't want to receive those 20 navy blue t-shirts, you want to receive one, which is exactly how you planned it and how you envisioned it to be. So the more detailed you are in your tech pack, the clearer it is for everybody, the more likely you are to get your first sample back how you want it, meaning less waste in the design and development process. You'll get an accurate, more accurate quote, quote with a detailed tech pack. The factory can make a quote, so there's less surprises at production, at costing stage, and then less surprises at production stage. A clear tech pack also keeps your manufacturer accountable. It means that you're very, very clear in what you want, so anything if they switch a fabric, for example, without informing you, they pick a different trim, you have something to refer back to, which is exactly what you want and what you've requested. So you're keeping them accountable for what they're doing by making a clear and concise tech pack. It's also a reference point for any quality teams further on down the line. Maybe it's just you working by yourself and you're gonna check your production when you get it in, but maybe you're working as part of a bigger organization and it's someone completely different who's never seen the garment before, who's gonna be checking it before it goes out into the marketplace. So again, the clear tech pack with exactly all the requirements in it is gonna make life much easier at that stage for somebody in a quality department to check and make sure that the garment is correct. Your comments sheet is easily tracking changes. So if you've made changes in the development cycle that maybe have a bigger impact on production, it's very, very clear if you keep a good track of your changes, exactly what has happened in the development cycle, why it's happened, what the reasons are behind it. And that might, again, eliminate any questions and confusion later on down the line. Most importantly, a very clear tech pack, concise tech pack, a Bible for each garment is the simplest way to save money, save time, and to save resources. We want to eliminate as much waste as we can during the design process and the development process. And by making a Bible for every garment that is clear and concise and exactly how you want the garment to be is the quickest and easiest way to eliminate extra samples, extra sending backwards and forwards. So it's gonna help reduce the carbon footprint of a brand. 
saving money and saving valuable resources. If you've got any questions, feel free to fire away. Thank you guys. Thank you. That was epic. I can remember I've completely screwed myself up. I've worked for so many American companies now that I can only do things in inches. So when I go back to a British brand, honestly, even when I me measure stuff on the wall, I do it in inches. I've completely screwed yeah. myself up. When <laughs> I started 20 years ago at Pepe, we were measuring our bottoms in inches and tops in centimeters. So to this day, I can't think the other way around. I struggle yeah. to think about bottoms in centimeters and tops in inches. It's, yeah. I think um, yeah. every single designer, I'm sure they're probably all screaming, can probably tell you stories of things going wrong with the tech fact that hasn't been translated. I remember I did a shirt once. Oh, yeah. I drew it like this, the shirt. I was really proud of my drawing. It actually came back like this. It actually had sewn the sleeves over, top stitched it all. So now I do detailed tech packs and I do things to scale. So um, yes. I yeah. do back pockets to scale. I do a lot of things to scale and I draw to scale. I don't even bother doing an illustration. I just do things to scale now. Yeah, much. same here. It makes life much easier in the longer yeah. term. You can and print it on the printer and it'll come out the correct scale as well. But that's exactly. me. Let's just check some questions. We've only got a few minutes. Which is, it was such a good presentation. You did such a good job. And I'm, I'm, thank you so much for, do, for doing it. Um, who's in charge of doing tech packs, a designer, a technologist, or pattern cutter, or the buyer? Hmm. Well, that really depends on the company that you're working for, to be honest. I mean, in a smaller brand, you might not have product developers and buyers. It might be one role, design, development, and buying all in one. So yeah, it totally depends. I mean, at Pepe, we were not very many people, and designer, developer was one role, and we all made our own tech packs. Then when I was at Wrangler, we had, very, we had quite a separate design and product development team. So there it was very much dependent on the product developer to make the tech pack. The designer would hand over a basic sketch. Well, not a basic sketch, but the designer would hand over a sketch. And uh, yeah, it was up to the product development team to really add all the other parts to it. Um, also to review the garments, comment, et cetera, et cetera. Since I've uh, been working freelance, I've worked on various different projects, mostly I've been handling the whole cycle from design development through to production all in one. So it's something that I really, really own as well myself, the tech pack. But yeah, I've worked with companies. So while I was working with Marks and Spencers, um, there it was a kind of combination of the design team and the tech team who were making the tech packs. So yeah, it really, really depends on the company you're working with. And it really depends yeah. on how many people are in the supply chain that you're working with. So my advice would be to everybody, learn how to do a tech pack yourself because maybe your first company you never need to do one but later on down the line you really might need to do one and it's super important that you really understand how to talk and how to communicate with factories pattern cutters trim purchasers like often they're just a little guy in an office who doesn't even have a clue about a pair of jeans but it's really important that they know exactly which trim you want to purchase so yeah really really learn the lingo get get good at communicating on these things Absolutely. Having the right true information and the bomb information, people always forget, you know, that you need to, they need to order these things in advance sometimes. They're not ready on the sample. Just being organized is really key. Being organized, exactly. And mm. even on the bill of material, you, I, it's quite important, I think, as well, that you specify where your trim item goes, because maybe you have two different rivets. So say yeah. a, pa a pair of jeans has nine rivets in total. You might have five, of, five branded rivets and, five, and four unbranded rivets. But if you yeah. just list the number of rivets, where do those rivets go? So it's quite important that you say the branded ones are on the front of the garment, the unbranded are on the back or whatever. Yeah. So yeah, it's really important. Otherwise, yeah, you, the first sample you get back will not be how you had it in your head. And there's one sample that needs to be remade. And there's Good. already one item of waste in the supply chain. Um, Laura, you've been fan fantastic. Obviously, uh, we, we've, we've, we've run out of time. I can talk about tech packs forever. I love tech packing. <laughs> I've got a, like a sadistic thing. I do like 30 page tech packs. I love tech tech packing. So yeah. I, I mean, a lot I, of people think it's kind of boring and unglamorous, yeah, but yeah, it's yeah, the yeah. bones, it's the skeleton of the garment. I love being a complicated one and people ask me questions, but everything's there, but they still ask me questions. That's me, I'm quite yeah. sadistic. Um, thank you for your time. You were amazing. Um, you. I, I, there are some questions. If you could go in and maybe answer yeah, some. Um, 